Hi, I'm Billy Maddox and I'm gonna mess this up so that you don't have to. Hi and welcome back to another Bookbinding Basics. Today we're gonna do a monster-sized origami book. Monster-sized. Well, I did start with a monster sized piece of paper because I saw this video online. Where else? Where else? That was not necessary to say. Saw someone making a, what they call a modular origami book, right? Modular meaning, I guess you can make it bigger or smaller because you can keep attaching pieces to it. You'll understand in a second. One thing that I should mention at the very start is that you start with a slip of paper that you sort of want it to end up being half the dimension, but you don't want to fold it in half. What you want to do is fold these two down, right? So that you can get your, your pages going. You'll understand what I mean in a little bit when I explain it better, right? Uh, but what I found was in every single iteration of this book that I saw videos for, they fold down the middle first so that they get the line to fold inwards like that, right? So they just join it up to the line. But what ends up happening is that it looks kind of crappy because you end up with, you end up th with this weird crease you end up with this weird line there right so i wanted to avoid that so instead of doing that line i measured out the middle and then just joined these two folds so i skipped that one fold okay let's get into it now another thing to remember while you're doing this is that you are going to be folding a piece of paper however big with smaller obviously it's easier but with what i was working with you're going to be folding page sort of lengthwise in half or you know lengthwise and that is against the grain of the page um, so there's gonna be a lot of resistance uh, so just keep that in mind uh, in order to get really sharp folds just make sure you're holding that in place um, with all your might or maybe not all your might but just hold it in place oh, just do it right okay just do it right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, you're going to want to hold it down really well or else your, your folds are going to be all wonky. Uh, because it's against the grain, it's going to fight you all the way through even as you're doing the fold. It's going to want to move on you. It's going to want to bounce back up on you. Uh, paper has a, has a, it has a grain. I can't really do it with this, but it has a grain. Um, and if you're going against the grain, uh, it, it has more resistance. If you ever want to test it, just take a sheet of paper and fold it, you know, top to bottom. It's going to sort of feel like it folds really easy. It's going to want to sort of lay down on itself. But when you fold it the other way, there's going to be a little more sort of springiness to it. Just keep that in mind. Did I over explain that? Probably. Look, this whole channel is about telling you what not to do. <laughs> not really telling you what to do. But telling you what not to do, I'm gonna mess this up so that you don't have to. Anyway, those were the problems that I encountered while I was doing this. Uh, other than that, it's just a series of folds. You fold those two sides in, and then you fold that little strip in half, and then you fold that in half, and that in half, and that in half, and you end up with your pages, right? Uh, you're then going to kind of zigzag or accordion fold it, however you wanna uh, do it. Um, to end up with two strips. Uh, you could do three, four, five, six, that's why it's modular. You can do many strips and make this a really sort of thick book. I'm kind of interested in maybe pursuing that uh, a little down the line because I really enjoyed making this. So that's the modular aspect, modular aspect of it. I'm just changing my accent. I didn't mess up the word. <laughs> that's the modular aspect. That's how I say that, how do you say that? You should probably say a modular aspect. That sounds weird to me. I say modular aspect. That's how I say it. You making fun of me now? 
<laughs> uh, you do the cover of it, so so you zigzag fold it and then you slip them together. What I love about this is that everything is sort of slotted in. There's no glue. I've seen a lot of iterations of this uh, of this sort of origami book where it's jun done just out of one strip rather than the little folds, and then the ends are glued together. No, I'm not supposed to use glue. None of this. None of this is glued together. And I'm kind of into that. It's pretty cool. Um, it all just sort of slots in together and friction fits together. If your folds are right, it should friction fit together and not really uh, want to come apart or come loose. And the cover works in the same way where you're essentially building the same little structure, just uh, much, uh, if you can see that in there. I'm probably showing it to you. I don't know why I'm... I'm probably showing it to you in the top down. I don't know why I'm trying to show it to you here. But you see the same little flaps that you did for the pages are in here, um, which allows for that little slotting in mechanism. The cover is relatively simple. Cut yourself a, a cut yourself a length of of paper, whatever you're using for the cover, um, of the dimensions of whatever your page is. Factor in a dimension for your uh, for the spine and then factor in the back as well and then kind of like don't double it but like it's pretty close you know um, so you know that that way that way you have beads that fold in if you do you know err on the side of longer uh, because that's what I did and I got one that was like really nice and to the edge and then this one was a little bit too long so I went ahead and cut it down not too bad um, it's all good. And that's pretty much it. A little origami, monster-sized origami book that actually ended up kind of not that big. Thanks so much for watching. Roll the thing.